good. Um, we'll call the uh, Deerfield Parks and Rec Commission meeting for June 6th to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the meeting minutes of May. Uh, someone make a motion. Make a motion to pass the meeting minutes from last month. Second. Anybody have any comments or corrections for it? All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, citizens' comments. Terry. Hello, uh, I'm, my name is Terry Crardy, and uh, I wrote something to so, uh, to so I could be brief and to the point. Uh, I've lived with my wife on South Road for nearly 18 years. But, Terry, just a minute. Um, you were one of the four candidates for the commission. Yes. So that's yes. Make sure what you're doing. Yeah, so. and I just want to introduce myself because I did submit a letter of interest to, to join you all to help uh, as a volunteer and, and to contribute in any way I can. So I just kind of want to, uh, uh, it might be evident here as a, if I read through this yep, really that's quick. That's fine. Just yep. be a minute. Okay, so uh, with the proud parents of two Deerfield Community School students ages 13 and 11, Deerfield Parks and Rec has made a very important and positive impact in their lives. They got the chance to explore their athletic interests in a nurturing and protected environment. It gave them the confidence and tools to try new things, which they continue to use in school and sports today. I would like to officially say thank you to the many volunteers who supported them by being coaches, assistants, helpers, officials, members of this board, and for taking on so many other roles. It's made a difference to my family. It still makes a difference for mine and many other children and families, and I hope it will continue to do so for some time to come. I'm not saying that there were not any dramatic moments along the way, but certainly those moments may have taught the most valuable lessons. And that is respect, fairness, and honesty are values that should never be compromised no matter what the circumstances may be. I find it hard to imagine that people can be more passionate about anything than their own children and youth sports is no exception. When I came across an ad in the forum, I learned this committee was looking for volunteer members, maybe even two, and I thought I should try to do something to help. I don't want to sit on the sidelines forever. I'm a very organized person and excel at developing practical systems and processes that get the job done successfully. My greatest strength is to follow through, check outcomes, and revisit issues until the re desired results are achieved. My professional career requires that I work carefully with children and families on a daily basis, and these folks hold me accountable, and rightfully so. Um, I don't want to overpromise and say that I will be leading the charge on every, in, uh, every one of the many and wonderful events the Commission organizes and, and offers each season, but I'll always be supportive, show up at the meetings, uh, help with planning if I'm not able to be feet on the ground and do the work required for a particular happening. Um, like I said in my letter, just to, to summarize too, over the years in Deerfield, I have seen much done with little and lots of folks working hard, donating their time, effort, money, and enthusiasm to make this a great little town. I hope to keep that spirit alive and help the commission offer a variety of programs and services that are healthy and enjoyable. So um, if you have any questions about you know, how I might be a good fit or whatever it may be, um, I, I, I made, I've said what I was hoping to say. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah. you for the interest. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure how the process works from here, but um, um, like I say, if I can help, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that um, uh, is, is uh, I don't like to com necessarily just complain without be offering an, an, an opportunity to help make things better and, and roll up my sleeves and, and do what's, what's needed. So um, kind of a light turnout tonight. I think they're all at the, uh, the, 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 the Blue Sox, the Deerfield Blue Sox, the AAA team is known as. Where your, uh, where your son tonight. is pitching, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's 11 years old, and so Get uh, going. <laughs> we're going to head over there. And that wouldn't be indicative of, of how I would, I would deal with things in the future. I've watched uh, a lot of, the, of your work on, on the, um, the web page, you know, through, through the streaming or whatever, and, and see that you guys are working on some, you know, a lot of issues that, you, you know, um, whether it be, you know, concessions or, um, um, I had a little list here, but I don't want to get into everything, you know, communication issues. And, and I, I think I have a lot of ideas on that because I'm also an end user. You know, I've been a parent and my kids have been involved and they've been in different sports year after year. So, um, and I know how, how, you know, some of us think when we're, we're seeing what you guys are all presenting. And again, it is a quality product and, and uh, just want to, you know, keep that going if that's the, that, that can be done. So the, the goal would be to decide tonight whether we, who we choose, and there is going to be, I think, a motion to increase the commission to um, 10 or 11 members to cover all four. Um, 
So that some way tonight we'll make a decision one way or another. That would be great. I mean, many hands lighten the load. I think that's uh, how that's said. But um, at the same time, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not a competition for me. I, you know, you, you're looking for help. And I said, well, I think I, you know, I'm at a point in my career, my family, I can leave my 11-year-old with my 13-year-old with the coaches. And when they were this small, I, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't come here. So um, now, I'm, um, you know, if I can give back a little, I, I certainly will. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anybody Thanks. Else? Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks. Jerry. Enjoy the game. <laughs> mm. hey, good luck. All right, um, just so everybody is aware, too, Jeff D'Agostino is our new commission member. He's filling the term of uh, Melissa's term. And we'll see if we hook him on when that expires, too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, All right. And next up, Deerfield Candia Soccer Partnership. Okay, so we had a meeting with Rob Boucher from Candia last night. Uh, Nate, myself, and Kevin were all there. Um, discussed basically the details since we all um, basically unanimously agreed that we wanted to partner with Candia. Um, so we nailed down some details last night. Uh, a few of the key points. Um, both sides agreed that we're not going to raise prices um, for the partnering towns so it was, if a candy of kids coming here for rec soccer we're going to keep it the same as it was if it's for or the same charge for Deerfield and, and vice versa if one of the Deerfield kids is going to um, candy for travel soccer they're going to pay the same thing um, so that was a big point of discussion um, what, what are they going to isn't travel more expensive it is candy? yeah it's about twice it's a little over twice the price um, from what we gathered with Rob last night, it goes from anywhere from 130 to 155, depending on what U team they're on. Um, so that that just depends. But um, but the kids will all they'll pay that price, not Deerfield's rec price. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I just yeah, if you're, make paying, sure you're going to travel, you're paying, paying the travel, travel price. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So, um, but whether you know, depending, regardless of what town they're from, they're paying the same. Yeah. Yep. Um, the question was raised, if they have a substantial increase, can we provide field space in Deerfield to play soccer, travel soccer here in Deerfield or host? Um, we're looking into options for that. Kevin and I checked Hartford Brook today. Um, they recommended that we try to help with 9v9 or 11v11, which are substantially large fields, um, which aren't going to work at Hartford Brook, we found out today. Um, but I did let Rob know that we'd be happy to try to do something for the younger kids if they'd like to shift. Uh, field availability that way too. Um, the other thing we're looking into is um, seeing if we can get help from the school too, where it is just a strictly a weekend thing uh, for travel soccer, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, that could be a possibility as well. So I'm reaching out to Cindy about that too. Um, and regardless of that, I mean, other than that, we're pretty much trying to just get registration up, uh, a link on Rec Desk so that we can start uh, the soccer registration process now rather than later. Um, give people plenty of time to sign up regardless of if they're doing rec or travel. Um, Candia's travel portion is already up um, and we're going to be dispersing that information to Deerfield residents soon. So so regardless of where. You got something Jeff? You just said something. You couldn't fit a 9v9 field over there but is Hartford. that with the new fields in? Because that's we have I guess the concern on that was is we have fifth and sixth grade, which is 9v9. So with the softball field, then you can't put that in any longer? Traditionally, uh, well, last year's uh, fifth and sixth grade field was not regulation by any stretch. Um, and, you know, last year we didn't have nearly the same grass space that we have now that it's hydro seed and, and everything else on, on the softball side. So it's going to be closer, um, but it's still not there. Um, that you, know, you can attest to that. We were there earlier and we... <laughs> We twisted it and turned it any which way we could, and we just couldn't get the length yeah. and, the, and the width that we needed. It's just they're, they're huge fields. Um, so that's what's where the, we're at. What's the size of the fifth six? Is it? It's like 70 by like 90. It's big. It's almost, it's not much smaller than a football field. Mm. It's basically, it's the width of a pro field, which is 100 to 120. Yeah. And then. Um, Shorter. And then almost. It wasn't hard. Yeah, it's basically two, way, but two of them sideways with 10 yards in between the fields. They're big fields. 
it, and when we measured it, it should keep the soccer field without going into the either infield of the softball or baseball field because that was one of Rob's requests, obviously, was not to have it go into the <coughs> playing surfaces of the baseball and softball field. So, I mean, if for rec side, I guess if that's not a concern, you maybe could squeeze it, but uh, yeah. It's ankle issues yeah. going mm -hmm. on and off. I mean, we have it at the school and it's awful. We actually cut the grass down and taper it so that kids don't roll ankles. You don't want to get too close to the fences either. The new fencing that's out there in every direction of the field too, it's, it poses an issue. It's a, you know, it's a hazard. How big of a field could you get out there? You think you could fit 7 v 7? Yeah, that was our next, that was our next um, field size we were probably looking third at. Third grade? Fourth grade? Yeah. Um, anything else to add from last night, guys? I'm not sure if there were any other hugely pressing points. We, it was a really positive and productive meeting. We really agreed on most of the, most of the terms and what, what, what's going to be happening. So, um, you know, we're, we're, there's kind of somewhat of an un unknown factor of how many rec kids we're still pulling in. I know when Rob and Rob were here the first time, uh, they spoke about approximately 35 kids, I think it was, um, from kindergarten to third grade that they had in a rec program last year. Um, but then you have the fourth through sixth grade that, you know, they haven't offered direct and they've been strictly travel. So we're kind of trying to figure out, we probably won't know until registration happens, but how many kids are actually going to come from that age group as well. Um, so we're looking, you know, somewhere between 30 and 40 that we're adding at least. You don't um, know how many are leaving though. What's that? You don't know how many are going to go. Right, so. right. Right. So, but there, it was also thrown out there that a lot of kids could play both if they chose. Mm -hmm. So, um, we got to be prepared for all situations. Now, how's the registration go for CYAA? Do the Deerfield residents go directly to them? They Is do. there advertisement to show them, you know, which email address to or go to or website to go to? Yeah, they do. And we talked about um, how we were promoting it, and we're we're going to stick separately for promotion purposes. So we'll each have our own flyer for a rec and for travel and with the respective links so you can go register for what you want to register for. Okay. But we'll post something on the DPR website? Yes. Yep. And they'll do the same? Yep. And their, oh, go ahead. No, go right ahead. Um, <clears throat> their price is, I think it was one, like you said, 135 to 155. Um, registration includes uniform, first uniforms for each player. Um, shirt, shorts, and a warm-up jacket. So it's all part of their their full registration. Um, if kids have, to, if they rip their jersey or they grow out of it, then it's the parents' responsibility to replace it after that. Um, but it does include the full uniform, socks, and everything in their warm-up jackets. And that's per season, right? Like, see, no. So it's, it's one, a one time. No, <clears throat> the fee is like say one fifty for the spring and one fifty for the fall. Yes. So Definitely. it would be like 300 for the year. Correct. Yeah, if they play spring and fall. Yeah. My question was, uh, will Candia send coaches over here to participate in the rec program, and will we send coaches over there to participate in the travel? Yes. Or, yeah. I think yeah, that's no. all. It's all. It's voluntary. It's based on volunteer also. Um, but if any Deerfield parents want to coach over there and they have a vacancy, they're more than welcome. And I think same over here, if oh, any yeah. of the candy parents want to, they're welcome to. Nate, that's something we talked about back in February with them, is that getting parents certified with the new grassroots program, with the 4v4, 7v7 program early, so that way you're developing coaches in the rec program with the thought that as the kids come, they're, the coaches are coming straight up through, right? Because you know, right now they may not have coaches, but if I understood Rob correctly, he's like, yeah, if these kids have the same coach, the coach is already getting certified, you're handing off a certified coach that already knows the kids, continue moving up with them. It was kind of the goal is that you have kids moving in, coaches moving together. Right. And over the next if, couple of years. Yeah, if you have the volunteers, of course. Right. Yeah. But it's also all volunteer. It's at this level, I mean, it's yes. the volunteer coaches that yep. parents or whoever want to coach. But C I know CYA makes it mandatory that they go through this, the training. training. So it's, you can, like, I couldn't just go and say, hey, I want to coach and, and jump in. I have to get certified through, yeah, so I don't know how two, the. There's a two-hour course you take online. Yeah. And then you're certified. Yep. But yeah, the New Hampshire soccer mandates that you're certified. 
kind of like Little League does. So what's the other course we're talking about? Is Same that refereeing? Thing. Oh, refereeing is a referee course. So there's a coach course, which is $25 for the on $25 for the online course, I believe, and it's two hours. You get your certification, and then you can coach in the state for travel and everything. But in general, it's just a good thing to have just to understand coaching and development of kids. The other thing is is the referee training, okay. which is getting, which actually gets you certified so you can ref tournaments and things like that, which um, I've talked to a couple people for kids. That's a really good deal mm -hmm. because if they're refing um, center ref, it's $50 a game at, at like a U10 tournament. 25 for sideline refs and if they're running a two ref system it can be 75 a game so they can earn a couple hundred dollars in a few hours well, I recall a higher level coaching um, program as well that right, was like so I thought there was a day four to eight hours or so they've changed it so US soccer just came out with a new program in February it used to be like an F license E so that's yep. where I started to go down and then they just pulled that out and so now a, B, C, and D are all national licenses, and everything below that is now grassroots 4v4, grassroots 7v7, 9v9, and 11v11. And you have to take two of those courses face-to-face -face and one course you can take online before you're qualified to go for your D license. Okay. So, yeah, they just that just came out in February. Face-to-face so -face is a class? Yeah, class. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to add anything else to the soccer stuff or clarify anything? Um, well, we just finished our futsal program. It went really well. Um, we have that summer camp that is going to be this summer. We have um, New Hampshire futsal and Brazilian art of soccer that are doing a combo camp where um, Nick and Kevin and Deb are going to uh, work and have it so that if you're part of the summer camp program, you can get dropped off during, if I get this right, normal hours if you've already paid your fees to go to that program. And um, there's no extra charge. So it's going to be you just pay the the fee to go to the camp and you'll still be able to drop them off before work and pick them up after work. So I think that's a good program that we're able to pull in. And um, and then we're working with Seacoast. They pulled the coach essentially that they're gonna have and they put a better coach on. Um, Matt, who used to be the assistant um, coach for UMass Lowell, so a division one program. And so Matt's gonna come in and run their camp um, to try to help uh, rebuild that reputation. And just so. to verify, the August 6th to the 10th is the dates for the camp? Correct. In the case of from 9 to 12 will be soccer, and then from 1 to 3 will be futsal, um, an hour break for lunch. And it's going to actually be at the building, so they'll play across the street for soccer and then on the tennis court for futsal in the afternoon. And it's for ages 5 through 15? Correct. It's like you have the brochure. Well, I'm reading it. <laughs> But and I'll get that. We'll get that out to everybody, and I sent it over to Nick to get up to the website. Right. Get that. Oh, and then we're just putting a. We, we talked about we're just putting a tea table together for people on what rec, rec soccer is, travel soccer versus club, so that parents kind of get that. Right. What that's the difference a, that's is. A, I kind of wanted to clarify is that it's still a volunteer program, and yep. that we're running. Um, both right. the rec and the travel is volunteer. Yep. There's no paid coaches or anything at that level so right. yeah I mean they, they use technical coaches so we've used Seacoast they've used soccer sphere for some of the technical training but it's all parents that are doing the legwork right that need to now get certified <clears throat> yeah absolutely for travel yep it would be nice to get them certified for Deerfield too I'd like to see us at least so right now the only online ones 4v4 US soccer hasn't coming out with an online version for the 7v7 or 9v9 but I'd like to see all the parents, the coach, do the 4v4 and if Park and Rec pick that up for the head coach, it's $25. I was going to say, is there I think cost? it'll help. Yeah. I, think I, it'll think, help. I, I think we should offer that we would pay for people to do it. I think that's what baseball does, right? Yes. In softball, because I think Tam Tammy had to do it <clears throat> two years ago. She had to get certified. Yeah. I mean, it helps the kids, right? right? Are we looking at offering a referee clinic, too, or is that... Yep, we just have to um, decide if it's going to be here or at the school. And um, either the last week of July or the first week of August is what um, they recommended. So we just got to pick that, and then we got to decide if we're going to do it all in one day, which is an eight-hour program, or if we do four hours on a Friday night and four hours on a Saturday. Do you know what the cost of that is? It's, I have to look it up. I think it's like 60 Yeah, I think that would be something we could 
look at reimbursing or helping, you know, pay for half or something to get interest in people doing it. So. Yeah, and should there not be the interest that we hope for, um, Kevin and I have also talked about hiring an arbiter uh, just to kind of clear the, the issue with referees. So, you know, it just has a backup in case. It's worked really well for baseball this mm -hmm. season. Um, a lot of towns use it just to ensure that they have referees for their games and you're not trying, you're not constantly pressuring your parents to, to step up and ref games for when they want to just watch. So. so once they're certified, they'll be assigned <laughs> basically somebody. So kind of like who you call, so they'll be on that list. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to write down their availability and all that. Right. So even if they take the course, you could in theory, you, I think you still have to pay a markup or something, but basically be able to call someone to do that if you wanted mm -hmm. to manage it that way. Or potentially have a volunteer be in charge of, like, Scheduling. another day we can talk more about the research on other programs, but they have a parent that's in charge of fields, a parent that's in charge of referees. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that maybe can't get to all the practices but still wants to help, that can be done around work hours. So there's ways to, I think, get there. But anyways, the, the program, we just need to lock down the date, and then they'll start advertising. Yeah. We should do that soon. Yeah. The next meeting is July, so. No, we'll, yeah, we'll get it done before. All right. Anything else, you guys, on soccer? Yeah, that's about it for soccer. I'd just like to say that uh, Congratulations for getting this thing done with Candia. I think mm -hmm. this is going to be a win-win for everybody. I agree. I feel really good about that happening. And I think it's a real positive step. And also all the work that Jeff's done with the futsal and all that stuff. I think that's soccer's in good hands here. I agree. So thank you. <clears throat> you want to do an update on adult so softball? You want to spearhead that one? Sure. Uh, so right now we've got uh, six secured sponsors uh, for this upcoming season. Um, our numbers, we have 80 participants registered online right now. Uh, that is down from last year. Uh, last year there were 95 participants registered. Uh, to, to, I guess, dig a little bit more into the numbers, uh, out of the 80 that are registered right now, 33 of them are new for this season. Right, uh, and out of the 33 that are new, 15 of them belong to the new Northwood team that we uh, agreed to bring into the league this year. So that means there's uh, trying to do math. Right? 18 are new that aren't a part of that uh, team there. Um, so there's still numbers that are out there that have played in the past that you know unfortunately haven't not signed up. Because um, I know we had hoped to kind of grow the league by at least one team this year, go from seven to eight. Um, I think that really would have helped with uh, scheduling, uh, made it easier on uh, Dwight here when you have an even number of teams, making sure that all teams play each other however many times they're supposed to. Um, but we do have enough for six teams, which is why we have just the six sponsorships for this year. Uh, one sponsor from last year did uh, say that they uh, weren't interested for this year with everything that they had going on, uh, but to keep them in mind for the future. Um, and uh, at the end of the week, I know I think we are, uh, Dick and I are getting together with Dwight to start taking a look at teams and scheduling. When does that start? Uh, we had tentatively said uh, Monday, June 18th, uh, but I think we are now looking at Monday, June 25th. Is that right, Dwight? <coughs> yeah. right. I just want to offer ample time to get uh, shirts and hats in too. So that's, that's enough time. time for you. Yes. Yep. Yes. I've been working with Kevin on some of this stuff. I made some phone calls uh, over the last few days, and <clears throat> there's a lot of different reasons why people that played last year aren't playing this year, and it's usually based around the fact that people aren't even going to be around or whatever. I, I didn't get any feedback from anybody that they were dissatisfied with the program or anything. It's like, you know, somebody's got to be back at school for the summer. These guys are not going to be around. Uh, you know, you get different family situations, stuff like that. So, you know, that was obviously a concern when we saw the numbers because the numbers were pretty low there not too long ago. Right, yes. Real low. Shot up quite a bit in the last That's week, it. actually. Yeah. So. And thank you for making those calls there, Dwight. Oh, no, no problem. But uh, it's good to see it up to that point. 
to nice. 80. That's yes. That'll, that'll work. Yes. I was I was a little nervous after the <laughs> three or four emails that went out within the month of May, announcing that registration was open and they were still low with about a week left to go before uh, signups uh, ended. Yeah. All right. Let's touch base afterwards. And get Absolutely. Together. All right, want to move on to Hartford Brook update? Sure. So I touched base with Jack Hutchinson uh, just to kind of put the lowdown on where we're at over there. Um, lots going on. Uh, infield skin on the softball side is in. Uh, irrigation and hydro seeding, hydro seeding just happened the other day. Irrigation is in progress. It's going to be up and running very soon. Um, we purchased cabinet materials to go inside the building, um, so we're waiting on a delivery for those. Um, once they're delivered, then we have a volunteer that's going to help. He's, um, I forget the guy's name, but Jack said that he's um, got all kinds of uh, experience with interior stuff. So he seems like a great person to have on board for that. I think he's the guy that had the connection at Home Depot to get him too, wasn't he? Yeah, it? yeah, I think so. His name Michael? Yeah, Mac or something. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, thanks to him for stepping up and helping with that. Um, Jack also mentioned that it's probably worth it to push back the brush line on the third baseline um, on the softball side uh, just for spectator area space, I guess. And uh, you know, other than that, things are moving along over there. The dugout pads are down. Um, later on in the summer, he's going to start constructing the dugouts on that side as well, and we're going to be looking pretty good um, going forward. We're not using the softball field this year? No, it's not quite ready yet. Um, depending on how things progress, we could potentially use it for some adult softball games later on. Um, but we, right now we're waiting for grass to grow after the hydro seed just got dropped and it's kind of bare in some spots, but it's looking good. Has everyone seen the dugouts that Jack constructed down there? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Y you should check them out. Yeah. yeah. Ball families, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I've been in a ton of dugouts over the years, and I'll tell you, those are beautiful. <laughs> really nice. Very fine craftsmanship. No surprise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did a great job. All right, you're good with Hartford Brook? I have one more thing for Hartford Brook, unless you have more? Nope. I just got a call from Cindy Hansen tonight. She told me that. Uh, the school baseball coach, Dave Drapo, has uh, said that he's going to take his coaching stipend from the school and send it to the town, and he wants it earmarked for Hartford Brook. About $1,200. Wow. Very nice. So, so you guys, keep your eyes open for that, and I suppose I should talk to Pete, let him know that's coming so we make sure it gets into the right hands. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. All right, uh, summer entertainment series. Sure, a quick update on that. Um, we're aiming for five shows this, this summer. Um, we've got three of them booked. Uh, Mr. Nick is locked up for Old Home Day again. Um, we had that chat through email. Um, we're kind of going in a different direction this, this uh, summer with the, with the entertainment. So we're trying some different stuff. Um, rather than loading it up with bands, we're trying to bring in some other entertainment. Um, we've got a BMX trick rider coming in um, on one of those dates. We set up a magic show. Um, and then we're talking to a couple of other acts as well about coming in, um, just to kind of gear it more toward the entire family and getting people to come out and raising those numbers a little bit. Um, we had a good turnout throughout the summer last year, but we're trying to see if we can capitalize on that and get some more stuff out there. Um, and that's, uh, that's about that. And uh, we're also looking at potentially bringing in food trucks um, rather than catering it ourselves like we've done in the past with the grills and stuff like that, um, just to kind of cut down. It's not like we make anything on it, and it's quite a bit of you know, work to, to get that set up throughout the day just for the Friday. Friday night. So we're going to look into that option, see how it runs, and um, see how it goes. Um, so that's it for summer entertainment. Uh, old home day. Old home day. Um, piggybacking off of that um, with the food truck thing. Uh, last year we had planned to do a luncheon, which didn't work out over the course of the day, so we're looking to add that in as well for old home day. Um, we do have the chicken barbecue, of course, at night. 
um, which that will be done well before it, but we want to have a food option during the day. So we're looking into that and providing that probably cut off, you know, around 1 o'clock or something, whereas the chicken barbecue portion, I think, uh, starts around four, quarter to 5 is what we had it on last year. Um, so we want to bring that in. Uh, we're, with that said, looking at chicken racks, dunk tank, all that stuff right now, trying to get that reserved and ready for the day. Um, if you guys think of anything else, anything else off the top of your heads that we need to get reserved. Yeah, the year. dunk tank last year was done by <coughs> football program wasn't it? it yeah they ran it but we rented it we so yeah we just kind of handed it off to them to run for the day okay yep and the chicken racks you should get on that ASAP because they're hard to get yep okay that's in there um, another note fireworks uh, have been approved for the night of old home day at the fairgrounds we are still waiting to hear from the fair association on their donation for this year and if they're gonna do the same thing that they did last year um, so they said that they're waiting to hear on that result and they're trying to let us know as soon as they can um, and that will dictate what we have for a budget I know pyro pyro works or whatever that that vendor was that we I brought to the last meeting they're looking to hear back from us and see if we want to go in their direction with fireworks so um, as soon as I know the donation amount we'll run with that um, it's the 18th of August right correct and, uh, and mr. Nick is locked up as the the main event for the day and things are shaping up can you give us a brief description of what you envision a lunch situation to look like? Yeah, it's just kind of it's going to be like an add-on, um, so an extra option while there are other games and events going on during the day, as we know. Um, you know, uh, I think Joe had it envisioned that we'd be able to to man that ourselves, him and I, last year, and it just it just didn't happen with everything going on. Um, so we don't want to put ourselves in a position where there's no option for food during the day and sending people off in different directions. I mean, we really want them to be there and participating in the stuff that we're offering. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, that was where the food truck idea came in. Oh, okay. So the food trucks would be there for lunch as well. Yeah, that that's just bi basically what yep. we want okay. them there for yeah. um, to provide that option. Yeah. Oh, I get you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Has anybody reached out to the local <coughs> restaurants? Maybe they can have grills or something down there where they could, you know, help could out. Be another option, definitely. Sure. Lions, Blue Bowl, whatever. That's I a think, great, that's I think a great the, idea. Yeah, I think the Lazy Lion, they, they do catering. I mean, yep. they have their wagon, too. Yep. They have parked out in front of their place right that now. That they bring to the fairgrounds. Yeah. You can talk to um, Yeah, that's a good idea, too. I like the idea of oh, yeah. local. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah. local and that's nice helping, yeah. helping the local business. See, yeah. I mean, you could get two or three of them. <laughs> yeah, right? We uh, can do in. one <laughs> yeah, yeah, each like, event. Yep. Yeah, even have them set up their tents. Or something you, you got Yanni's, you got uh, the Lion, man. you got the Blue Bowl, and you've got uh, Country Munch. Mm -hmm. There's three right there, but yeah, right, yeah. And that maybe was maybe instead of having three at each one, see if they each want to do one. Just either way, I mean, they all offer different things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have kids, my kids never eat the same thing, yeah. <laughs> unless it's chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> chicken nuggets. And that was another thing that Kevin and I had spoke about before was. Um, potentially opening it up to vendors too, just in general, the, the whole day where you have all that foot traffic. Um, kind of like we did, we attempted to do for Winter Carnival um, in that same sense. So extending that to the restaurants and stuff I think is a great idea too. Yeah, for, <clears throat> for Old Home Day, it would be just for the lunch time. Right, correct, yeah, just that portion of it and we obviously do the chicken at night so we don't wanna step on the toes of that. Right. But. Great. That's all I have for Old Home Day at this point. So Old Home Day again is, what did you say, the 18th? 18th, yeah. Third Saturday August, in August. August 18th. You guys going to want to have the baseball again? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. What about a race? Absolutely. Yeah. Bicycle? Or just running. Road race, right? Ernie and I had briefly spoken about bringing the bicycle race back so maybe I can talk to him and whip something up mm. pretty quickly but I know that the trails that the, the uh, course was on are kind of overgrown and not maintained so we'd have to come up with something different but maybe it could be something through the uh, the fairgrounds as well mm -hmm. an on and off road option mm -hmm. I'll help you with the baseball <coughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. 
Uh, before we go off to the openings, uh, can you give us a quick update on the batting cage pitching machine situation? Yes, we can. Um, AQ Fence is taking care of the batting cage for us. It's still in progress, but they have re-cemented the poles, um, and we're just looking, waiting for them to connect them at the top. So it's been a little bit of a process. Um, it wasn't a one-day job by any stretch, and, but they're, they're moving on it, and uh, pretty much on course, they, they had originally quoted us to be done by the end of June, so we're on track for that. Um, other than that, it's, it's looking good. So just to keep in mind, next winter we take the fence, the caging down. <laughs> yeah, the net will come down. The net will come down. Yeah. How about the pitching machine? Is that operable? It is operable. It doesn't get much use typically, but it it does work. Um, it takes some adjusting when you go in there to start using it to get it to yeah. an appropriate height. Typically, do yeah, most coaches just throw? It's old to the kids. I've never even seen a, a coach throw. It doesn't get a lot of use. I mean, maybe for the sole fact that it, it's old and it could stand to be replaced at some point, but it, it works fine. Well, Ernie, Ernie has one at his house that's the same or parts and pieces. He's talked yeah. about being able to clean it up. And but I thought it was just for parts and pieces. I didn't know it was a full unit. I, I, don't, I don't remember. From the emails. I got from his email. Yeah. It was two. You could ask him. There There's the man. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't it take it in tonight. I don't even know if the coaches know that works. <laughs> the batting cage? Yeah, they do because they've asked when it's going to be up and running. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, so that's good to get the fence up and make it available. So it could be available for the All-Stars anyway this year. It could. Those are starting next week. They're starting next week. So, yeah, potentially, depending on how deep they go. Mm. We're just talking about the batting cages, Ernie. Sorry? Just talking about batting cages. Batting cages. And the machines. Yep. We'll let you get settled now. Tell us. Oh. Because you have one at your house, right? Is it just I have parts? one at my house, which has been cannibalized to an extent. Um, and it was sitting at Rick Pelletier's house for years unknown. Um, what I do know, I, I did leave information with Joe. It, it had all the uh, manuals and whatnot. And at the time, it was only a few years ago when I received it, the company's still in business. And I thought the parts were reasonable. But, you know, I think, you know, they're rusted and it, it probably needed an overhaul, even the, you know, those motors and whatnot. Uh, I also know the one at the field was left open to the weather. You know, the uh, control panel covers were popped and, so that would probably need a complete overhaul too. Um, I don't have an idea of price, but of course, I don't know you're going to have a rusting uh, <laughs> framework with new parts. I that might be feasible. I, I just don't know at this point. Where, where are the manuals? Did, where? Uh, I, I know I gave them to Joe, and if we could just um, there was even a <laughs> an instructional. Uh, the tapes, VCR tape. I can show you how old it is. <laughs> um, but I do know at the time the company, you know, it's been in business a long time. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's time to, or, or maybe, you know, there might be some used ones out there. But the point is, we can get the name of the company. Right. Maybe we can get a contact person with the manufacturers. Hey, look, we have this. Yeah, maybe I'll get somebody to come look at it from the company and mm -hmm. see. Right, and they can, you know. Right. Uh, tell us what the best path may be. Yeah. Something else we might want to consider is to speak directly with all the coaches and see what their thoughts are. You know, I don't know. Maybe everybody will say we just want to throw to the kids. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and give, get us a nice L screen down there that we can throw over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You know, I, I think it would be worthwhile at least finding out what they want. I mean, if they want a pitching machine, then we can deal with refurbishing it or whatever else we need to do. But if they don't need it or want it, then sure, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think that would be a good maybe end of season question to ask coaches or yeah. yeah. I, I, in service? terms of the pitching machine, I heard a couple coaches mention that. Uh, at times, they it is nice because they can throw the pitch, but depending on the size of the player, 
it's hard to adjust to their strike zone. Um, so that's why some coaches say they don't use it as much. Um, has the board thought about going more in the route of a traditional pitching machine as opposed to what's <coughs> there? You know, where you get the two wheels, you put the ball in it. So I was just wondering is we put a lot of effort into this thing and it doesn't get used. Right. You know. Well, maybe we can look into pricing out, you know, what the traditional machine is or mm -hmm. something. Where it's easier to adjust. Right. Okay. And maybe that's something that we can implement for the Snack Shack next year. Proceeds will go towards, towards. pitching machine. Because yeah. Jeff and I were talking about that, and he brought up a really good point. In order for people to volunteer, most people, would you said it was a thermometer, right? They you want something, something to aim towards. You work towards something. <clears throat> Gives you work towards create something. a goal mm -hmm. to have a direction. Yep. So we could have the snack shack open. I mean, people will be donating the food, hopefully, and drinks. All the proceeds go towards a new pitching machine for baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or whatever we you know, come up with stuff for yeah. programs. Right. Since the uh, topic of the concession stand came up, uh, obviously, there's been a, an issue trying to figure out how to get those stands operating because, uh, you know, Jeff and I go back a long way with this one over here. A lot of work went into that in Jim D'Alessio's name, and it's a shame to see it sitting there. And it would be a shame to see Hartford Brook just sit there, too. So something needs to be done. One thing that I took the liberty of doing was talking to a lady at the school, a mother, that will be in charge of the eighth grade fundraising next year to see if that would possibly be something that they'd be interested in coming to do. Again, it's just an option uh, to get those facilities running because I think we really need to do that. Uh, you know, so I don't know how it's going to happen, but that's you know out there right now as a potential option. So. They're going to talk about that and get it back to us. All right. We ready to move on to commission openings? So we have one opening now. Um, we have four applicants. Um, what I'd like to do is either pick one of them to fill the opening, or I think. Someone has suggested we increase the size of the board um, to take all four. Uh, I guess I want to get the feel of the board to see what people think about increasing from 7 to 11 members. And um, yeah, I'll take responsibility for that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited to see the fact that there are four, four more people out there that want to be part of this group. Mm -hmm. And they all have young kids, which I think is really important. I mean, for years, this group was a bunch of old timers whose kids weren't in the program anymore. Uh, so it's nice to see those young people step up. So instead of making a motion to change the number from 7 to 11, it's probably it's a good idea just to talk about it, see what people think about it. It's just an idea. I think it's great. You have more hands in it. You have more opinions, more thoughts, less time. You know, if, if somebody can't step in and be there for something, you have 10 other people that can be. So having the, the options, more options is always a plus. And they'll have more ideas that we wouldn't come up with on our own. So I think it's a great idea. The more, the merrier. I agree. And they're all, all four are fantastic candidates. So. Right. I, I think it's a no-brainer. Well, to be the negative side of that, um, you have four now, and in two years when two members leave, are you going to be able to get two more to fill it up? So then you're going to be looking at, if you can't fill 11, and then you do reduce it to nine because you don't get anybody here. You know, I, I just don't know if we make this a fluid board where when you have the people that want to be on it, you have 11, but like I said, when people get off it, and you can't get anybody, is that a problem? I, I, um, uh, my thoughts are two. One is, um, first of all, 
extraordinary candidates. And I agree, Dwight, it's great to see people wanting to jump on board. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not a big fan of big committees. Uh, and like you say, it, it may seem like a good idea now, but a year from now, two years, whatever. And is, there's some legalities here that we have a charter that says seven. I'm trying to, I've been talking to the town administrator and trying to find that out, and I don't believe we do. Yeah. So I think we're, I mean, we could, we could make a motion tonight pending, you know, research and finding out we can right. do it. That would be how I would do it tonight. Right. Um, and lastly, this is a little more immediate, and I, I hesitate a little bit to say it because it's considered somewhat political, but, you know, it would, uh, the gender balance would be <laughs> way off. We lost two extraordinary uh, members earlier, and they were both female, yes. and you know, they had a lot of, brought a lot to the table. So that's, that's a, kind of a secondary thought I had. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, first and foremost, I, gu I guess my experience is... Uh, Bigger committees um, can get cumbersome, um, and you know, in a remedy recognition of that, you know, in, the big picture is we're having trouble getting volunteers, and especially the young people with kids, which is really the lifeblood of the programs, um, to get their input. You know, um, do you think they'd be interested in? I mean, like Katie position is you're kind of a de facto member you often give us great input if they were to come here and you know we get them in the loop and hey we're going to be at Hartford Brook and Jack Hutchinson is going to run us around and do this that and the other thing uh, and, and just developing that chain so to speak I mean it, the only it, difference really is they're not a voting member large or something like that yeah, or yeah. alternates or subcommittee like oh there we go yeah that's something I consider but um hmm. So I don't know that's my point of view. And being the newest guy, uh, <laughs> okay, so my question is, is, I guess looking at it is, if I think of it as a bigger board, if you think of a big company that has a big board, right? Like we're, we're small, we don't have a big one. But you have subcommittees, right? And so if you're looking at what gets done for work or pulling stuff together, would a larger board give you that flexibility to say, Here's the group that's kind of helping organize with ideas for this that kind of allows it to break off mm -hmm. so that it's not such a big, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a big board, but you essentially maybe have a group of them here. You guys are in charge of like helping yeah. to make sure sports are on track yeah. and brainstorming on that or some summer events and actually having s mm -hmm. subcommittees within the board that you end up having your, your board, but people, not everybody's working on everything. That way it's kind of a divide and people working where their expertise are, um, but you still have your bigger board that you come back to. So would these, so you're saying you'd increase this to 11 and then have subcommittees out of that? Yeah, I'm just throwing the idea out that, yeah, so if you increase this to 11 and then said, okay, he, here's some people that are really interested in baseball and softball. So you have a subcommittee that's in charge of working with kind of baseball and softball and coaches and helping with things on that, that then brings that back in or fall sports or if someone likes to help them with the summer they just don't know enough about it. kind of all the little nitty-gritty stuff that you guys are working on and how that could be broken out potentially if you had a bigger board to make it operate smaller mm -hmm. times so that makes sense not everybody has to do everything I think actually because I'll say coming from my perspective where I don't have the coaching expertise I don't have you know or the experience I, I can't bring a whole lot of background to that, but I can, you know, certainly bring it background to event planning or communications or, you know, something like that. So I think that makes a lot of sense to sort of let people be more focused on specific or more specific things. Hmm. I like that idea a lot, actually. So what it sounds like too is what you might <coughs> you might do is have a reorganize or. Uh, reorg, but an organization of the commission and set up, you know, subcommittees and yeah. a structure that I'm not sure exists right now. I mean, the commission used to have, uh, VZ Park used to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And then when they, <coughs> I think when we kind of grew this commission, Parks and Rec grew, VZ mm -hmm. asked to have their own commission. So, you know, that's off by itself. But we could do, your idea is, is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. 
I was thinking it would help with like they're working on the summer program with bands and ideas that you could mm -hmm. I think more sometimes more a couple more minds bring in different perspectives that mm -hmm. would help kind of enrich the options and then people can come back but not everybody maybe wants to work on that right right yeah. um, so that way you, you have people that want to help and yeah you help bring some more ideas to the table and if they can volunteer or add to those that committee that they're not on even better yeah they're not restricted to right. just work on their yeah. one yep. committee yeah. right but their primary you know focus would be on a specific mm -hmm. group within the committee hmm. thank you good I like that idea it, it's fluid too I mean like uh, not to all be around for the next 2016 or the 20 <laughs> 66, but, um, you know what I mean, things come up or, or uh, you form a, the committee and they work on that and when it's the need's not there anymore, they move on to something else or, or they, you know, they stop participating and a new wave comes in. But I, I guess uh, how would we formalize that? I like the concept. Or we just, can just appoint, maybe approach what well, we need Obviously, we need to fill a board member, but uh, the other individuals say, hey, how would you like to uh, take on Old Home Day, be part of the Old Home Day Committee? Because that's something that's permanent, too. I think, well, what we do, I would think, is, again, that we would make a motion to create, to increase the size of the board to 11, and then we, are head of an organi we would have an organizational meeting and set up a structure and talk about who and how and... Um, you no, know, I think that we could do that. Um, just a little the numbers on. Yeah, that makes sense. Make a motion then that we increase the size of the Parks and Recreation Commission from seven to eleven members. I second that. Um, can you just put a caveat that we make sure we can do that? <laughs> We're still. Oh, right. Yeah, we we'll need to check with John and make sure that's kosher that that all works out. Mm -hmm. There's not know, a restriction. There's no restrictions to, to doing that. Thank you. Still good on the second. I am still good on the second. <laughs> Anybody else? Any more discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Six to one. Okay, um, any other new business? <coughs> Actually, I have we'll an old business scholarship update. Um, Julie is still willing to finish out the scholarship run. Mm -hmm. um, so we still will have to get together with Connie and get a picture taken and stuff like that. Yeah, I already reached out to her. She's ready for it. I just have to wait and hear back from the scholarship recipients and coordinate with them. So their their instructions were to reach out to me and then I'll coordinate from there. So okay. just wait and hear back from whoever was awarded the scholarships. Okay, yep. good. Great. Any other new or old business? Yeah, just one more thing on the commission going to 11. Uh, what's the next step with relation to these uh, candidates that expressed an interest uh, I just would make sure with John that we're all set to do it and then we can have um, their nomination forms filled out and it'll come before the Board of Selectmen at hopefully the next meeting okay so we get confirmation from John that everything's okay to do yeah and then confirm with the four that they are all still interested to become a large board okay and then they'll have to go through the process of We'll get a nomination done, and then the board will, selectmen will approve it. Okay. And then they'll have to get sworn at, too. There, there might be um, some other considerations, like quorum. You know, right, right now it's four. That we might want to consider changing that. Yeah, that's if what I was actually having a larger number makes a higher quorum. But right. You that's, think that's some of the details we might not realize that we'll have to consider at some point, I think. Mm -hmm. If they, is there a charter or something? Or? I'm trying to find it. I guess John could tell us. Though. Well, John said to ask Dwight. What's that? That's right. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, hold, wait a minute. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Basement somewhere, maybe. <laughs> a lot of other stuff. All in the field <laughs> looking for boxes. 
Yeah, it's buried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it's Anything else, anybody? <laughs> so we're going to, we got to go into a non-public, and for those of you that aren't familiar with how non-publics work, um, Dwight's going to read the RSA, which is 91A3, colon, 2, um, 3, 2, which deals with um, public employees and compensation. When he reads it, um, someone will second it. He'll make a motion to go into non-public. Someone will second it, and then I'll go around and ask each member, are you okay? You'll say yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. And we'll... Um, stop the meeting we'll go in and probably we'll say there'll be no action taken and then we'll go in Deb's gonna come down and talk to us um, and when we're done with that we'll come back out we'll say we're gonna no action was taken um, we all good with going back to a meeting we'll go back around again and say yes or no and uh, then we'll can reconvene this meeting and either uh, make a decision at, at that point or we'll close the meeting for further discussion. Does that make sense? Yes. And what we'll do is we'll go in that room, just that's what we do. Probably don't have to, but we will. So, we good with that? Could, when are you guys gonna get Deb? Sure. Okay, so uh, non-public session RSA 91-A colon 3 number 2 the dismissal promotion or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him or her unless the employee affected it, one has a right to a meeting and request that the meeting be open in in which case the request shall be granted you have a second second uh, repeat that a second the non-public session for RSA 91 alpha subpart 3 and 11 good I, I agree I agree I agree I agree I agree yes I agree all right uh, we'll Stop recording for a few minutes here.